Hey, what's up guys? Nunu here. I've always wanted to try 3D printing. For someone working in 3D for years, the idea of bringing digital models to life felt like magic. When the opportunity came, I had to choose. Go with an FDM printer, the kind that melts plastic and lays it down layer by layer, or a resin printer, which uses liquid resin and UV light to create incredible detailed prints. Spoiler alert, I went with resin. And maybe that was my first mistake. Or maybe not. Resin printers promise insane levels of detail, but they also come with many challenges. Messy chemicals, extra steps, safety gear, a lot of cleaning after every print, and also some small injuries. So, was it the right call? Let's find out as I put the Eligo Saturn IV through its paces. I'll start by showing everything you need to 3D print with resin. So, the obvious is a printer and resin, but that's only the beginning. I also got the Eligo Mercury XS bundle to clean and cure the prints. Once your print is done, you can just take it off the plate and call it a day. It needs proper washing and curing to be fully finished. Now let's talk about safety. Resin isn't something you want on your skin or on your lungs. So gloves, a mask and protective glasses are a must. For cleaning, you'll need isopropyl alcohol, at least 90% to remove uncured resin from your prints. And trust me, you'll go through a lot of this. I also recommend setting up a dedicated workspace, ideally in a room with no direct sunlight, since UV light can start curing your resin unexpectedly. If possible, add some air extraction and an air purifier to keep fumes under control and improve ventilation. Other useful tools include a scrapper to remove prints, resin filters to keep your resin clean, and plenty of paper towels for the inevitable spills. Right on, man. <laughs> Right on. So these are the essentials for getting started with resin printing. Now that we have everything ready, let's move on to the actual printing process. I will start by printing the test file that comes with the Heligo Saturn IV. This is a quick way to check if everything is working properly. It's an easy print that's already included on the USB drive. So all you need to do is pour some resin into the printer. When you turn it on, the printer will run a self-test and get everything ready. From there, just select print, choose the test file from the USB drive, and you are good to go. Once the print is ready, I'll carefully remove it from the build plate, place it in the cleaning station with isopropyl alcohol to remove any excess resin. After the wash cycle, I'll let it dry for a bit on some paper towels before moving on to the curing process in the UV machine. As you can see, the results are really impressive. The level of detail, even in the small lettering, it's really incredible. Now, I think it's time to print something I can actually use. I'm keeping it simple with a planter. For this, I searched for some files on printables.com and found a design I really liked from Helios Library. He has some amazing pieces, so I'll leave a link below for you to check out his work. For this print, the process was a little different, since I needed to use a slicer to prepare the file for the printer. I used Shootbox Pro, which comes included with the printer, and the manager, which allows me to connect directly from my PC to the printer. It also lets me use the built-in camera to monitor the entire process. I scaled the planter down a bit, so I could print both parts in one go and the entire printing process took about two and a half hours. But here's where I encountered my first problem. The print was really stuck to the bed. I was using so much force with the scrapper trying to get it off that I ended up cutting myself in the process. And when I finally managed to remove it, I was applying so much pressure that I ended up slightly damaging both the print and the build plate. Definitely not the smoothest experience. But even with this small problem, I'm really happy with the result. And as you can see, the final result looks great. And now I can use it to add some greenery to my setup. Next, I wanted to test the level of detail this resin printer can achieve. So I went for something a little bit more challenging, a Lord of the Rings diorama. I found this 3D model online and luckily it came with all the supports pre-edited. So I didn't have to tweak anything. All I had to do was load the files into a shader box, 
scale them down to fit everything into a single print. Even at a such small scale, the level of detail is incredible. Once all the pieces were printed and cured, it was time to assemble the diorama. The model originally included connectors to help with alignment, but since I had to scale it down, they didn't actually fit properly. So instead, I went with super glue to attach all the parts together. The process was pretty straightforward, just a few drops on the contact points, a little pressure to hold the pieces in place, and within seconds, they were solid. One thing I learned though is that if you use too much glue, it can leave a wide residue, so applying it carefully is key. The whole process went smoothly and at that moment I was thinking, oh wow, I'm a pro at this, but I was about to find out that not everything is that easy. To end this video, I decided to print something else I could actually use. I found this lamp kit for the IKEA Strala Court Set by Forma Studios on Fangs.com. This piece was a little tricky because it was designed to fit the IKEA Strala, so I couldn't scale it down to fit both parts on the print bed. Plus, this model didn't come with pre-built supports, so I had to rely on the auto support feature. And as you can see, the result wasn't great. The print took more than 8 hours to finish on both parts, and in the process I ended up breaking the diffuser while trying to remove the supports. The automatic supports left marks on the print, and when I tried to glue the piece back together, I wasn't able to clean off all the excess resin. The final result was a pretty poor print with lots of defects. I really think I got luck with some of my first prints, but for someone with zero experience in resin 3D printing, I'm genuinely impressed with how easy this printer is to use. Compared to some other printers that require a lot of preparation, all I need to do with this one is pour some resin, turn it on and it's ready to go. So to answer the question I posed at the beginning, was getting a resin printer the right call? For the kind of use I have in mind, printing fun dioramas, statues, or even small items to improve my setup, I definitely think I made the right choice, especially because of the amazing detail and smooth finish that resin printing offers. Plus, I'm not a fan of the filament look from FDM printers. That said, I don't see myself using it as often as I would an FDM printer. The whole process takes a lot of time, you have to be extra careful with safety, and I found myself spending around an hour cleaning up after every print. So that's a wrap on my first experience with resin 3D printing. I hope you found this video helpful. Whether you are thinking about getting into resin printing or just curious about how it works, if you enjoyed the video, check out my 3D scan video where I show you how to add realism to your Lumion project. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any tips or questions and if you'd like me to bring more videos about 3D printing to the channel. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.